Hello again, everyone. We are in section five, and we are adding fractions. So for each of these problems, we are going to go through and figure out what it's going to take to be able to combine two fractions together. If they have a common denominator, we can just plow ahead. Uh, if they do not, then we will need to do some extra work to make it so they do have a common denominator. And sometimes it's going to get real messy. So we're going to go through a few examples that are easier and some that are much harder. So let's try to stick with all of these. Uh, this first example here, uh, you'll see, does have common denominators. So this one isn't going to be too bad. But before we get too far, let's go look at our handy-dandy flowchart, as we like to do. Uh, and we're going to figure out what we're doing here. We're going to go from the start, and we are going to follow that all the way to addition. So we'll do our initial parentheses and then decide that we're working with addition and go through this full list of all of these different things. That's a long list. We'll break it down. We'll try to understand it. And then at the end, we do need to go through and simplify. But usually that's going to be pretty straightforward if we do these right. So first things first, it says parentheses around the entire numerator and the entire denominator. So if we look at this, we wrap everything up in parentheses before we get started. Just kind of a safety mechanism. In some cases, they're not needed. In fact, in this topic, this particular problem, those parentheses are actually not going to be used or needed, but they are needed such a high percentage of the time that it's worth just getting in that habit. It will prevent you from making all kinds of mistakes. So just always start your problem that way. Then it says decide what operation you're working with. We are working with addition because there's a plus sign between our two fractions. So from there we have this big list. First thing it says simplify each fraction separately. Simplify each fraction separately. And then it says choose a common denominator and multiply the numerator and denominator of one fraction by the same factor to get the common denominator. So the whole goal here, all of these steps are saying get a common denominator, get it the smallest common denominator that you are able to get. Because the closer you get to that least common denominator, the less reducing you'll have to do later on. Now, if we follow those directions very literally, and we said reduce it first, we would take a 2 out of both of these, put it out front, we would factor out a 2 from the denominator, and we'd cross out those 2s. The problem with that is that it would actually undo some of the work that we already have done for us in this example. Uh, because we already have common denominators, we are going to essentially lump those initial steps together and skip them. So sometimes directions, when taken completely literally and not thought about why we would do them, will actually backfire on you. Could you get the right answer eventually? Absolutely. It would just be a waste of time. So. These first three steps are all about getting the smallest common denominator that we can. So when you already have that, you can kind of skip down. It says distribute across the numerators to remove parentheses. We don't have anything out front of our uh, parentheses up top, so we can actually remove them completely just like that. If we had numbers out front, we would have to distribute across. We'd have to multiply through. Let's continue on. It says add the numerators in a single fraction over the common denominator. This is the big money winner adding step. So what we are going to do is we are going to say that these two equals a bunch of things over 12u to the fourth v squared because that is our common denominator. So a, the bunch of things is going to be 2u negative 4v positive u and positive 6v. So right here we just added. Did we clean it up and simplify? No, not yet. But we just added across the top. We put the first chunk plus the second chunk. The parentheses are gone so it is just written all out over a single fraction. Then it says uh, combine like terms in the numerator and finish by simplifying. 
So our like terms in the numerator are the ones that have the same letter. We have two u's, we also have another u. We have negative 4v and positive 6v. So if we combine these together, our u's 2u, and that's really 1u, and it's just a u like that, that's 3u. And then negative 4v and positive 6v is 2v. All of that is over 12u to the fourth v squared. When we look at the top of this fraction here, we will see that uh, the entire top has nothing in common with other things. So it's got a 3 and a 2, nothing in common, u and a v, nothing in common with each other. On the flow chart, uh, when it says to factor all groups fully, there is nothing that can be factored out of that top, meaning that no matter what we do, nothing is going to simplify since the bottom will never look exactly like that. So we are done. We're moving on to our next example. This one here, we have 5 fourths plus 2y over 5y. Let's follow our flow. We start at the beginning, parentheses around the entire numerator and denominator. Let's do that. Some good habits. Next step says we are going to add. So first simplify each fraction separately. In this case, uh, 5 over 4 does not simplify. Uh, 2y over 5y. Uh, even though these are wrapped up in parentheses, we know that since it's multiplication here, we can break this down into 2 times y and actually get rid of these for the moment. Bottom would be 5 times y. And since we have a y on top and a y on bottom both being multiplied and no addition or subtraction, those do eliminate or cancel out. Now, that leaves us with 5 fourths plus 2 over 5. We'll just wrap those back up just so we don't forget. So that equals some number, and we'll actually be able to get an answer out of this one, which is nice. Continuing on, it says choose a common denominator. Choose a common denominator. We have a 4 and now just a 5, no y. Uh, and so our common denominator uh, is going to be something that both of those go into. Ideally, the smallest thing they both go into. And 4 times 5 is 20, uh, so that is one common denominator. There is nothing actually smaller than that. You could do 4, 8, 12, 16, uh, 20, and 20 is the first of those multiples of 4. That's divisible by 5. So we need to find a way to make it equal to 20. To make 4 equal 20, we would multiply it by 5, meaning that we would also multiply the top of that same fraction by the same number. Because if we're going to change a single fraction in an expression, we need to make sure we change it in an equivalent way in place, meaning we multiply the top and bottom by the same thing. Over on the other side, we need to multiply 5 by 4 to get 20, which means we have to multiply the top by 4 in order to keep everything equivalent. When we do that, when we do that, let's go back to our chart. It says multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 of one fraction by the same factor to get the common denominator repeat on sex fraction. That's what we just did. We are now going to distribute across the numerators to remove the parentheses. So distributing in this case is just a single thing times a single thing. So it's just straight multiplication. And then 5 times 5 is 25. 2 times 4 is 8. So we have replaced those. We have a plus sign in between. Our denominator is 4 times 5. We could leave that in factored form. Since they're just nice clean numbers, we can actually multiply them out and just get 20 uh, down here just to make it a little easier on us. If you had something like x plus 7 or something that looks more like an algebraic type problem, uh, it would be totally fine for you to leave the denominator staying factored all the way through the problem, even in the final answer that you get. So. Looking at these two fractions, uh, and going back to our chart, it says add the numerators in a single fraction over the common denominator. So we're going to create one fraction over our common denominator, which is 20 in this case. That is our 25 plus our 8, both in our numerator, 25 and 8. And when we add those together, since they are like terms, they're both just numbers, we're going to get 33 all over 
20. So let's go back to our chart. It says combine like terms in the numerator, which you just did. Simplify. Factor all groups fully. Well, 33 and 20 uh, do not share any common factors. 33 factors into 3 and 11. Uh, and 20 does not factor into either of those. So there's nothing that's going to be a common factor. So we skip that. This is before limiting, check for excluded values. Again, we're not going to focus on excluded values right now. And since there's no uh, letters, variables in this problem, it actually wouldn't have any. Um, and then finally, eliminate factors top to bottom, nothing left to eliminate. Let's go through one more example. This is the money winner down here. This is one where the flowchart is very much going to be helpful. This is the more of a test caliber question. First thing when we start a problem is parentheses around the whole numerator and the whole denominator. Parentheses around everything. Next, we are going to decide what to do and we are adding. So we are going to simplify each fraction separately. And when we look at these fractions, I have a 6 and an A up top and an A plus 5. And there's nothing I can do to get anything up on top there to look like A plus 5. The other side, we have a 3 and a 2A minus 4. There's nothing I can do for the 2A minus 4 to be able to factor out a 3. And 3 is its only factor besides 1. So there's nothing that directly reduces in this first step here. Next one says choose a common denominator. This might seem a little bit hard at first, but you actually are just going to choose to make it the two denominators you have times one another. And so what we're going to do is take this first fraction right here, and we are going to times it top and bottom, which means it's not going to really change, by the entirety of 2a minus 4. And the reason we're doing that is we want it to have a common denominator, but we don't want to change its value. So over here, we're going to multiply by this one's denominator, a plus 5, and then a plus 5. And so we have now in our denominator a 2a minus 4 and an a plus 5, a 2a minus 4 and an a plus 5. We have two exactly identical denominators, so we'll be able to add these. Let's go back to the chart says uh, we multiply the numerator and denominator by one fraction um, of one fraction by the same factor to get the common denominator and do the same for the other fraction. We did that and we are moving on to distributing across the numerators to remove parentheses. So now we need to distribute to remove parentheses. When I distribute I tend to go from the single term to other things so in this case we have a single term and we have a double term here, a monomial and a binomial. And we have the same thing going on the other side. So 6a times 2a is 12. 6 times 2 is 12. a times a is a squared. We also have 6a times negative 4, so negative 24, and then a cross that out because we have distributed, it is done, that's what we have. Over here we have 3 times a is 3a, 3 times 5 is 15. And we can cross out that original one there. Back to the flow chart, we have, uh, it says, to add the numerators in a single fraction over the common denominator. We are right here. Add the numerators into a single fraction. And so if we look at this, we now have all of this here with the same denominators that we've been working with all along. And so if I were to continue this, I would put 2a minus 4 in parentheses and a plus 5 in parentheses and write my entire numerator over the top of that. So we got a 12a squared, we've got a negative 24a and a positive 3a that are all being 
added together. And that's going to make negative 21a. And then finally, a plus 15. And as we look at that, we have our uh, complete numerator there. We do have things that we could potentially simplify, but I'm not sure how fruitful they will be. Let's take a look. Uh, it says combine like terms in the numerator and then simplify. And under simplify, it says factor all groups fully. This uh, right here, this quadratic, is actually capable of uh, being broken down a little bit. We see a 3 in all parts. And if we divide everything by 3, then we might just be able to find something that factors nicely inside. When we do that, uh, we look for uh, a certain kind of factoring where we multiply the ends uh, and go with higher digit, higher first digit. Uh, it's something we hadn't talked about for most people this year, so it's going to seem like kind of a new, uh, unusual skill to do that. And I will tell you that in this problem, it does in fact stop. So we are not going to even pursue this route. It doesn't really uh, help us. So I'll just cross that out and say that our final answer, our sufficient answer, is this right here. 12a squared minus 21a plus 15 all over those two pieces of our denominator. Good luck on this topic.